and coming to the horticulture because since i am uh, working in horticulture institute i will uh, focus more on it coming to horticulture diversity of crop husbandry definitely there is open cultivation there is protected cultivation so many scenarios and the pests also are evolving to adjust to those uh, crop husbandry practices and so the associated pest challenges are more in this conditions so what is the solution it is sustainable ipm strategies but uh, unfortunately if you see the ipm definition says it is integration of all existing available methods to bring down the pest population to a limit where the economic losses does not occur right but i don't think we are doing ipm we are practicing ipm but in my words the ipm is integrated pesticide management rather than integrated pest management okay this is the another paper which i kinds of ipm you can see there are four panels a b c d or all, all four panels highlights when pesticide increases the yields also increases particularly in a and also in b and see the interesting part is yes. see this is the d you can see here a b c d both pesticide use and yield increases a and pesticide use increases yield declines b and also both pesticide use and yield see fall c this one and the pesticide use declines and but yields increase this is very very green area where we need to focus and they say if you if you practice ipm in total the cost benefit analysis is almost you can see how much it is looks exaggerated right but it is a study which that was carried out across you can you can see here under 62 projects in 26 countries so we cannot question the authenticity definitely it must be the strength of ipm actual ipm if the paper which i was mentioning pnis paper is a, the paper is just a survey paper which circulates the questionnaire across the countries for participants and they collected information and they just analyzed and they published in pnis such a beautiful paper then i understood we need not do all uh, high end uh, molecular biology work to publish in science paper and uh, these uh, pnis still we can publish with simple ipm work also okay you can see here they they across the countries they evaluated the main thing what i see they identified the obstacles in uh, uh, practicing the ipm mainly because of either research weakness 10 point almost 11% and ipm weakness itself so the both are research weakness as well as ipm weakness points the fingers towards research community only right so because of uh, lack of research or lack of uh, uh, awareness or whatever it is the ipm is not happening as it should be so what are the management options there is bucket list of options but nobody bothers about i don't know how many of you exposed to farmers on day to day basis we will be getting exposed whoever comes to us the first thing they will ask what is the chemical what is the insecticide we if you give a package of uh, some cultural and all those things they are not happy they are happy with the already i sprayed this what next what next so how many molecules can come into the market day on daily basis if we are uh, misusing them so only the one which uh, farmers focus chemical the what is the use of uh, luckily several broad spectrum pesticides are already gone out of the uh, market now but still if you see simple practices if you are associated with the crop any crop i am telling if you are associated with particular crop or uh, the pest complex associated with it if you are noting down the day to day basis the observations see this is the study carried out by an california based university they said just having a pollinator habitat just to sprinkle some flower uh, seeds near uh, soya bean crop field the in uh, the yield will be increased almost uh, 6.52% this is not a small figure right 
in spite of traditional breeding techniques the breeders will uh, almost keep target of this much and that much 6.52 increases just by having one flowering patch near your soya bean crop how many of our crops we are uh, arriving at information like this okay and that 6 uh, yield increases through seed size increase because of the pollinate so the quick fi fix mentality should go from farmers we need to educate the farmers and uh, today several insecticides are already out and many of the insecticides now whatever is happening also new molecules and uh, we need to educate farmers the insecticides are lost option or it need to be applied on the need based uh, like left and right right because how, how much time it will take for a new molecule or chemistry to come into the market can anybody guess how much time it can take any new insecticide yeah exactly 10 years so one biochemist or a team of biochemists struggles to find a new molecule in a over a 10 years of time and how much time it will take for our farmers to make it useless two to three years hardly they will say it is not working so how many molecules can come so now gone those days when farmers were putting the pesticides using that uh, lids containers match boxes and all now the chemistry is very sensitive and 0.25 grams means it is 0.25 grams only right we need to make our uh, farmers sensitive about the dosages so that the in insecticides whatever are available they will be there effective for long time so there are several uh, areas where we can identify ipm components but i will be focusing more mainly on insect plant interactions because as i said it is a gold mine for identifying semiochemicals so what is the uh, ins insect world what is insect world Insect world is water world. Insects perceive their uh, uh, conspecific or mates and their host plants, everything, and their immediate environment through odors only. So there are several uh, list of characters, right, uh, which says uh, what made insects uh, successful on this earth. So many are there, size, flight, so many. In my opinion, the best character that made them uh, even, uh, they witnessed dinosaurs, you know, Insects witnessed dinosaurs, dinosaurs perished, but uh, insects are surviving. Okay. So what made them that strong? In my opinion, it's all faction. They're all faction. So if you see five senses, panchendriya, right? We call, I equate the insect all faction to our nose, but uh, it is very wrong to, we heart when we are passing through bakery and all bread baking and all not uh, not beyond that uh, our olfaction is very very limited but if you see insect olfaction what i feel do you, can you identify these characters one is daredevil what is the trait of daredevil he lost his uh, sight right when he was kid and he can develop extraordinary smelling capability and uh, the medical research says if you are uh, compromising on one sense the other sense will develop extraordinarily that's why you see blind people how confident they are when they are crossing roads we are worried about them they are not worried right so when one sense is co compromised the other sense will took over and uh, insects can uh, Insect vision is uh, almost compromised, I can say. Though they have very beautiful complex eyes and all, their vision is highly compromised. So I feel their olfaction developed to the tune of, you can see the amount of uh, water they can perceive. Very, very nano amounts. Nano amounts of water they can perceive. So what is our agroecological networks? What is happening in our ecosystems? Uh, water networks. We have all 2G, 4G, now 5G, right? 5G is going on. So insects already have long before all these Gs. There are host plant odors that are attracting herbivorous insects, natural enemies, pollinators, all these water networks above the ground and as well as below the ground. And all this will lead to, if you work out, uh, all these pest management tools like pheromones, caramones, salamones, whatever it is based on that. So 
identifying the semiochemicals or infochemicals i will say why it is very important they are not only effective economical and environment friendly provided if you can identify the critical cues you can make to your tunes that is the power of semiochemicals unlike insecticides so what you need to identify you need to identify all these things i won't say you have to identify all these things in all crops across all the pests just i am listing out there you know how many know of you know push pull strategies right you know to want to have a push pull strategy in particular crop against particular insects at least you need to focus on these uh, components i don't say all will work for one insect any one may work or may not work you need to look into these components particularly and mainly working on this area only particularly mainly in horticultural crops we are working if you see the semiochemical or infochemical technologies in india maximum sex pheromones are available to some extent like major pests like spodoptera helcovarpa even tephritis fruit flies all these exist on borrowed knowledge we don't have any indigenously identified pheromone even till to date and if you see our chemical technologies like uh, tyramones alamones chemical elicitors or push pull strategies almost next to zero they exist so this is just to, to show you in horticultural crops i am showing you across all crops what is the global scenario what is indian uh, status and what is the particularly in semiochemicals i am talking okay wherever global level any semiochemical is available we are uh, really fast we already downloaded our cut and paste happened but the scope is immense the scope is immense k stands for chiromons sex pheromones and even blends also this is just fruit crops you can see the knowledge gaps uh, uh, at this stage and uh, same again fruits vegetable crops you see wherever global level any semiochemical is there almost it is available in india but for indigenous crops or in indigenous crops we don't have any information and i i see this is the one plantation crops you see the rich scenario at global level almost in india but still gaps exist on future scope so my i am really elated to see this much big group i got doubt i asked me all our entomology she said yes sir oh my god seeing this many entomologists in one place it is really feast to eyes okay what i am telling just in the semiochemicals or insect plant interactions you can see the gaps research gaps how much information as a student student research can generate and add to our country this is the publication indian research publication you can look into it see several areas we are working i am mainly focusing on pheromones and also ipm is also to some extent is there very very meager you can see the number of, number of published papers this is particularly in semiochemicals i am telling or ipm and uh, if you see the global scenario i just developed one uh, graph where india stands if you see the in ipm studies yes india is there ipm studies though other countries are topping india still exists there in ipm and if you come to chemical ecology india disappeared what stopping us doing chemical ecology because uh, we don't have uh, luxury of uh, downloading all semiochemicals infochemicals from other countries because they don't have our pests we have to work uh, for our pests we have to work so what is stopping as madam said instrumentation right i we need for uh, chemical ecology high end uh, gcad gcms so that is stopping us who is this guy ha huh? i didn't put the name but you can guess him ha huh? the person who identified first sex pheromone bombicol ha huh? yeah yeah correct yeah so he did it all by biosis only he was doing something he left his uh, moth silk moth in one cage and he removed the moths next day when he came and when he released the 
male moths where previous day he left the female moths in the same cage and he took out females and left the male males were aggregating on particular areas and they are smelling and uh, exhibiting sexual related behavior then he was thinking what so that type of critical thinking is needed you don't need gcad gcms all the time to publish the good chemical ecology work he did it all by biosis so that led him to the first insect pheromone bombicol okay and this paper again the methylugenol how many of you know methylugenol right it is the major uh, component particularly for uh, management of fruit flies not only in india across the world even till to date almost more than 100 years is over and you know the one thing it was identified in india only in pusa campus by a british entomologist and this statement i like very much actually my mentor is here dr wog is so he says the same study today would have been through a series of statistically designed experiments chromatography and even sophisticated wind tunnels to validate the olfaction but such facilities were not there how he identified methylugenol which is not able to even uh, be replaced even till today after 100 years so keen observation understanding your insect understanding the your experiment is very very important so this is another thing what i want to show particularly for chemical ecology studies you can see identification of sex pheromone somebody was uh, norin was attempting this the first panel says exane extract of pheromone glands from 20 virgin females okay he took 20 virgin females he crushed he extracted the pheromone and he injected in the gcms you you, you can see the actual pheromone is masked here this is the actual pheromone these are all all the other background noises maybe fat tissues all those things but if you see this panel which one will attract your attention the bigger peak right we will be focusing on this only what is this must be pheromone but actually pheromone is here so next what he did head space analysis of one calling female so he studied the insect behavior when the female uh, uh, calling behavior response will happen at that time he collected the volatiles from one single female you can see the pheromone peak stood out right that is uh, the technique is not important but your behavioral observations are very important to bring clarity to your experiment so another things many times even simple compounds will work in this storage based even water is aggregation signal and being used in across the storage uh, facilities so what is the way through to identify good simio uh, chemicals or info chemicals you need to understand plant insect plant plant uh, i mean plant even you know communicate yes yeah all these interactions will help you to identify the components to strengthen our ipm programs so what is the work to understand your insect thoroughly this is the through you know which part they crushed for what they crushed also i don't know and when i call them what you crushed for what you are doing they also don't know need to understand your insect that's what i'm telling need to understand your insect and what you are focusing that is very important particularly in chemical ecology you need to have surgical uh, specificity with your experiments then only it can happen so having said that chemical ecology is not all that easy i am telling because you will be doing all your behavioral biosis yes insect is responding doing everything is happening and you have to again identify those chemicals okay gcad will do that job you will identify the chemicals again you have to procure all those synthetic chemicals because sometimes when uh, my srf is doing gcad suddenly if i enter into the room uh, one peak will come okay what you call such peaks false positives right so so uh, to differentiate for you need to conduct with synthetic chemicals again after identification of gcad all your gcad peaks are not the potent peaks after you again procure the synthetic chemical biosis then only you will understand which chemical is attracting or repelling then 
so you will do that also okay all chemicals very costly you will procure you will do and you will prepare blends finally it is working in the lab the moment you go to field it won't work it happens it happened uh, many times with me okay so what we came using the current uh, knowledge and available uh, technologies this is not new technology what we proposed in pharmacology already it is in use because in pharmacology you know in silico docking they they have a list of drugs and um, on the drug molecule and ligand interactions on protein protein interactions and they will uh, shortlist their drug molecules same thing we proposed here using um, obps and wards now it is very easy actually when i started this work it was very costly to generate transcriptomic data it used to cost me around uh, in 12 13 almost one and a lakh for one sample i am talking now you can uh, generate same information in 15000 it is very cheap now and uh, these we using these obps wards we Uh, prepared uh, 3d models and we docked all our prospective we know already i worked on the dorsalis fruit fly the prospective chemicals we docked and what we did all this uh, already i worked on these chemicals i know how they were uh, how much they are attractive so i took same molecules for my study i docked them and i developed the in silico kd as well as experiment perfect match you can see now almost towards about 90 perfect match in silico kd and experimental kd are matching so what else you can uh, cut down your list of chemicals and you can focus only on the few which are showing really really good uh, uh, indication so where and all you should look for your semio chemicals you can under you can focus on all these uh, behavioral ov position site selection of female you can look into mate selection niche partition even host plant resistant natural enemy interaction all these behaviors if you focus in depth today morning uh, one faculty was asking aishwarya if some if you want to give next student and one virus which one you will give right if you want to go in depth on any of these behaviors for any pest i am telling def definitely you will generate immense knowledge particularly for chemical ecology so from now onwards i will be focusing majorly on fruit fly you know this is bacterocera dorsalis major pest in mango not only mango across the fruit crops i can say and uh, highly invasive and uh, quarantine pest though we are number 1 in mango production our uh, exports are not even 2 to 4% mainly because of quarantine restrictions from other countries because of this insect pest so this is the field uh, damage actually the female select the physiologically mature fruits i mean when fruits are ready to harvest the females go and they lay eggs this boat shaped eggs and slowly the fruits start rotting they fall down and uh, ultimately the maggots will be like this many of us would have eaten i tell you either goa or mango many of us the egg stages first larval instars are very in inconspicuous we would have eaten also and that just protein rich yeah so coming to the fruit fly management uh, strategies there is one uh, tactic which say fallen fruits uh, sanitation is very important in fruit flies they say but you tell to farmers they never follow they will say 101 reasons for not following the sanitation they will say labor is not available that this but all others uh, other tactics they want to know for fruit fly except sanitation so we th we collected the uh, both egg stages and larval stages from uh, the ground as well as from the tree okay we collected what and how many stages appear on the ground how many appear on the tree actually on the tree if you see almost nil fruits uh, on uh, nil uh, stay, uh, infestation on the tree many are on the uh, fallen fruits only means they are breeding on the fallen breeding on the fallen fruit so we did why they are breeding we took the obps and just uh, uh, generated the phylogenetic tree you to our surprise you see bacterocera dorsalis it is close to what is this musca domestica saprophyte so it loves the rotting fruits 
right when fruits are not available and fruits are available on the tree the population level will be immense in the orchard then they jump to the fresh fruits on the tree so when entomologists say sanitation need to be followed it should be followed so this is another major uh, Con uh, management component, methylogenol, what I was talking about. The major source in the nature is tulsi. Have you ever noticed tulsi? Fruit flies will be aggregating on the tulsi. Actually, even if you put tulsi extract also, fruit flies you can attract, but only the la shelf life is problem. So what we did, even uh, Madam was mentioning about the patent and all that, it is simple impregnation process which we went ahead. Right? And... Uh, what we thought, it attracts only males, methylogena, attracts only males. Okay, it is highly polygamous. The female is highly polygamous. You capture 99 males in the field. The remaining 1% is enough to fertilize the wild females. So what is the use? Then we thought, how about uh, going for uh, female trapping, female trapping. So even we worked on all uh, other uh, alternatives also. There are several methylogenol isomers. We could work on it. And we found some are attracting females even through docking. What I was telling through docking, we confirmed. Certainly some components are very interesting in this. And uh, then we thought we, will, we need to trap the females. But uh, what is the use of trapping female? Just I am giving you here one hypothetical example. Suppose one female lays 1200 eggs. Consider the sex ratio as 1 is to 1. Just I am telling. And in generation 0, if you trap one female over a period of time, how much progeny you are culling? That is the interesting thing of trapping females and it is it will work actually. But... Um, you should say whether trapping female is easy. Hmm, not easy, right? Personal experiences. <laughs> okay. So we thought, yes, it is very tough. You, you use any sex pheromone, you male insect. It will come to your trap. But trapping the female is very, very complex. So what we thought, you need to look for the weak link. The weak link in any female, let it be insect or let it be mammal, the weak link in female history is the progeny. You attack her progeny, she will be trapped. You just attack her. So we looked for the oviposition site selection, which places it is selecting the uh, for laying its eggs. Definitely unlike the mammals, suppose. If you take mammal, when the progeny is there, mother will be there, right, to take care of progeny. And uh, so she will be assured of the safety of the progeny. But in insects, very poor mothers. When uh, eggs emerge, ma mother is gone. Mother is not there. So it should take care of the progeny even after its death. So it will select such a place where its progeny will be safe and also will get eaten because many immature stages are not mobile right they can't shift uh, if food is not available so there's so many criteria a female insect will uh, weigh before laying its eggs so this work i carried out in uk uh, as a for ovi position site selection actually initially when i got this uh, rotham stead fellowship it is i'm talking about 2010 11 i applied first in the first time, like Aishwarya didn't succeed for uh, Inspire, I also didn't succeed for Rotham Stead. Okay, the reason was uh, the committees mentioned I proposed to work on fruit fly, mango fruit fly. Actually, my mentor asked me to work on Drosophila. I said, no, no, no. I can't waste my six months on working Drosophila there. Again, come back. You know ICR and state agriculture universities. Whatever you propose, they will ask what is for farmer, right? Next day, you have to give something for farmer. So I said, no, I want to work on fruit flies. They are highly invasive, quarantine pests. So my mentor said, how you will work on fruit flies? And I said, you get me permit to get my, I will get my insects, I will rear my insects. He said, uh, if you once lose the culture here, again, there is no way you will get the insects because again, it has to come all the way from India. So I am just reminding you, you should not uh, lose your time here. 
I said, no, I'm confident. I will rear my insects. Please get me permit. So he got me permit. So the first uh, time when I applied, the committee felt uh, she is proposing to isolate and identify the host cues that are uh, attractive for female. Okay. The female oviposition only happens when the fruit ripens almost or matures. In, in, in uh, London or UK, you won't get green mature fruits, right? Mango. There is no mango. Mango will be exported to there and they are very ripe and all by that time. So the committee felt there is no point uh, accepting her proposal because here she won't get green mature mangoes. But they said this, uh, so the, this uh, comment should be conveyed to the applicant. If she can justify, we will still can permit her to come on the fellowship. So the comments were conveyed to me what committee or jury felt. Then I did my extensive literature search. Why can't I work on ripe mangoes? So I said more than uh, green mature mangoes or fruits. The ripe fruits are more attractive to the dorsalis through literature search. Only I provided. So still I said I can work. Because my idea is to identify the chemical cues. Let it be green mango or ripened mango. What is there? It should be attractive to the female. Then they accepted and uh, I went there. I smuggled my flies from here. Okay. And uh, I could establish. My uh, mentor got me bananas. English bananas the, they liked. And they multi I multiplied them like anything. Okay. So all these, all these compounds I identified, they are attractive to the fruit flies. Just I want your attention here on green ones. Kerin and Asmin, I will be talking about them later, little later. So after coming back to India, among the compounds, we identified very powerful ovipositional stimulants. Because when I'm doing bioassays, some chemicals are there like gamma octalactone. If you just keep that chemical nearby, the female start releasing the eggs. It won't see whether fruit is there or fruit is not there. It starts releasing the eggs when gamma actalactone is there. So such a powerful bovipositional stimulants, if you can identify across the insect species, it will be a great contribution, I tell you. As students, I'm telling, you have a liberty of uh, playing with the work, right? So what we did, uh, why it is madly responding to the gamma octalactone? Because gamma octalactone is not present across the fruit crops, but it is highly polyphagous pest. How it is uh, going through? So we reared the flies and mango where gamma octalactone is present. Banana, no gamma octalactone and also gova. So for several generations, we reared on these fruits. And finally, again, we exposed them to the gamma octalactone. You can see here, again, they are madly responding to gamma octalactone. Okay, here you can see potato and cucumber, which are not natural hosts for mango fruit fly. When we are smearing gamma octalactone to potato and uh, cucumber, how much they are uh, getting attracted and started laying eggs. Such chemical cues need to be identified across the insects, whichever we are focusing on. So, Based on this work, several publications we went through and we identified. And the another interesting thing is overwriting the memory. Yes, highly polyphagous, how it is switching the crops. Then we thought, see, gamma octalactone, it is uh, responding very madly. We took another beta caryophyllin, which is non-host Q. Just in the generation one, one is to one we exposed. Actually, not many eggs here, actually. And gamma actalactone, you can see the number of eggs present here. Slowly, we over generations, we started increasing beta caryophyllin and reducing the gamma actolactone. It started adjusting to the beta caryophyllin. So how host shift act, uh, happens in the nature, we, could, we can uh, understand. So you can see the number of eggs laid in gamma actolactone in the initially the green ones, the yellow ones, beta, beta caryophyllin towards uh, end of the study period, they could even equally accept the beta caryophyllin. So that explains how the host shift happens. They can learn. They can learn from the existing cues. So that complicates the management practices actually.
So again, we thought uh, we have methyl eugenol for attracting female. Even gamma octalactone, if you try with gamma octalactone, you can attract females also. Can't we get one sex lure uh, which can attract both? So when we were uh, un seeing this jackfruit in the field, uh, we found um, both males and females were uh, hovering on the burst to open fruits. When we cut open and when we did biosis, we could identify very beautiful chemicals. All these were uh, now we are exploring to attract both the sexes in the field. And another thing here, another uh, angle, why insects we cannot win. So we were thinking we, we can use these chemicals, that chemicals, unlike insecticides, uh, semiochemicals, they cannot resist. So evolutionary, they are tuned to these chemicals, so, so they will get trapped. So we were doing one uh, experiment like what and all genes that are upregulated and downregulated to gamma octalactin. That was our experiment actually. So my research associate was chopping the heads in uh, fruit fly eggs because immediately we need to chop. Actually, we need to dissect out antenna. You know, diphtheran insect antenna is very small. She said, I can't do it. I said, okay, you chop the head. Let us see later. So she was chopping the head and putting in RNA later for transcriptomic studies. What she observed, that's what I say. Keen observation is very important. Small observation she brought to me. See, the chopped heads when we are... Uh, the insects were chopped, they are moving happily around and they are showing all uh, regular behaviors like wing cleaning, leg cleaning and all those. And uh, really I was surprised, head is gone. And how still insect is surviving and uh, working there. So then we started uh, observing the insects. They were alive even after egg, head is gone, at least from one day to seven days minimum. They are alive. And they were showing all uh, the behaviors, particularly. Then we thought whether still without a head also, whether it can perceive gamma octalactone. Yes, when we exposed them, they started releasing the eggs. You can see here the different treatments and even GC EAG also, they are responding. How What, what is happening? And we took all the behavioral observations. No doubt, half of the time they are in stationary phase. But rest of the time, you can see, all wing cleaning, abdominal grooming, all the things they are doing. Definitely, even head is gone, insects can survive, still they can perceive the odors. How they can perceive? Yeah, that is the power. You can see, we even uh, studied uh, what and all genes are upregulated in uh, insects, which, uh, females which are without head and with intact head, there are certain genes which are upregulating. With Even we ruled out it is not stress factor. Because many times if you are cut the head as involuntary act, they release eggs. No, it was. it is not. It is well thought act which insects are showing. So very interesting. And this could we could do mainly because of our research associated observation. Yeah, still females after chopping the head, they are moving around. So after doing all these ovipositional stimulants and all the for fruit flies, I was presenting in one conference. Some sericulture scientists were there. They said, you are identifying uh, oviposition stimulants for pest insects. Why, how about doing for silk moths? Because you know, silk moths are domesticated long back, right? How they allow the silk moths to lay eggs, you know? In granaries, uh, granages, they will give some brown sheet, right? And they, they keep the mated female and they ask, uh, they leave it there. So it will lay eggs and it will die. So what he said, uh, that this came to know from him only. He said before dying female ha will have still fertilized eggs in the abdomen and uh, without releasing them, it will die. So even if you can stimulate the moths with one one percent eggs are released, it is it is great contribution to the silk industry. He said. So I was searching about the literature. This is one this one paper, uh, very high end uh, labs, Max Planck and uh, Japan uh, labs came together and they published. They compared Bombyx mori and its wild progenitor. What is it? Bombyx mandarina. 
it is free living silk moth unlike bombyx mori bombyx mori forgot to fly in in its life actually bombyx mori life objective is eating mating dying that's all it don't know how to fly so but under in a flies it is free living insect it is wild progenitor of bombyx mori that brown one you can see this is bo bombyx mandarina this is bombyx mori so what these labs did they compared the olfaction of these two and they said uh, captive breeding for thousands of years uh, compromised the olfaction of in bombyx mori so i went through the paper they used a couple of odors which bombyx mandarina knew but not bombyx mori right so what is what does it mean suppose we like all idli dosa and all right suppose if you give idli dosa to an hardcore american will he relish if he is not liking it can you say his uh, taste buds are uh, not there no so bombyx mandarina knows those odors so it responded bombyx mori don't know those odors so what next we did we collected mulberry volatiles we exposed the bombyx mori moths yes it responded very beautifully it responded to mulberry odors where that's why i said it it cares only progeny right where it is laying so our next step was evaluating all those odors whether it is able to release all eggs in the abdomen through proper biosis and dissections we did and we made blends and we applied for the patent now silk board is evaluating this now it is just like aromatherapy okay just uh, with hand uh, sprayer you spray that um, brown sheet what you have with mulberry odor the silk moths will happily releasing the eggs the mother moth uh, thinks mulberry is around right in a food is there for my progeny it releases the eggs without any inhibition that's what we did after seeing our work dbt was impressed and they gave us a few more projects to identify ovipositional stimulants for a northeastern uh, vanya silk moths all this tasar muga eri we are working on it under uh, different dbt projects now so almost uh, in certain evaluation trials are happening so the second area where you should focus mate selection how mate selection happens in insects it is very very detailed procedure it doesn't happen just like that actually particularly in uh, tefritid it is like swayamvara only okay the the major uh, uh, factors parapheromones protein and host fruit these the, these are the variables that play role what happens first the leg formation takes place leg means group just group of males arrive both mature immature and all and uh, they attract the females selection happens and then mating uh, takes place so in the whole process males produce long range pheromones literature says okay and also males choose fit females how they identify fit females no idea and finally female may produce short range pheromones and uh, finally the mating happens so this much procedure is there in tefritids how about your insects how many insects are there how many of us know the mating ecology of insects how what is happening here this is one insect what we found how they are identifying the fit females that was the question so when we offered the female female to the male here we didn't give any order actually we kept the female insect here male insect here and when we offered female you see the attraction of the male okay to the female next what we did antibiotic treatment we removed all associated microbes then the male did not like the female without microbes male did not like so again we reinfected with anti microbes then the attraction came back so what is happening exactly so we went into all gut microbes reproductive associated microbes one fellow like klebsiella oxytoca we we could identify this in both um, ovaries as well as common oviduct and when eggs are being laid the klebsiella oxytoca was being smeared onto the egg uh, cover so that's how uh, how the males are identifying the fit females so what is happening without klebsiella 
when we removed clefts here you can see here the ovaries are immature immature ovaries i don't know what is happening with clefts here what and all hormonal regulations are happening this is the study need to be carried out but without clefts here the female may, ovaries are not matured so males are not interested to invest in such unfit females that's what happening here so we could identify certain chemical cues and uh, we will be pardon yeah now we are focusing on that even accessory glands and uh, rectal glands are also there now we are but in our uh, that um, when we stained and when we checked it it is there in ovaries and also in common oviduct it is present so when egg is passing through automatically it is getting uh, infected with the klebsiella cytoka and i will show you what is the role of klebsiella later also because it is not chance factor what uh, it is happening there must be some evolutionary reason for uh, its association so even the microbes were playing this is my one of my phd student work associated with uh, stress tolerance also particularly in uh, fruit flies this is another interesting uh, particularly for microbes you saw um, butterflies how beautiful they are right with very uh, beautiful wings and uh, very sensitive but if wing is broken or damaged suppose the butterfly life is gone right for how long butterflies will stay alive maximum any guess few days right not beyond that but before that it has to protect its wings so we our question was how it is protecting its wings for a, maybe a mechanical damage you leave for a, all other reasons like a biotic or abiotic stresses we found there is a microbial gardens on the wings we could found it they are ectosymbionts i can say and this is also another interesting study and we can look into the evolutionary relationships of insects and their particularly in butterflies which have very sensitive wings so another thing niche partition niche partition means what is niche partition hmm? this is your area this is my area don't venture into my area i won't come to your area it is happening in insects also particularly in fruit flies there is a mango fruit fly there is goa fruit fly and it is how they are partitioning their niches we what we did we infested the goa fruits with dorsalis we infested goa fruits again with correcta goa fruit fly when we infested the goa fruits with dorsalis the correcta is not preferring to lay and vice versa how they are identifying there is correcta x or there is dorsalis how they are identifying so when we took the volatiles from both the fruits same goa fruit infested by garecta infested by dorsalis you can see the volatile uh, peaks differs what is happening how the volatile peaks are getting differed Th that was our question then we checked again the microbes are associated with these fruits are totally different these are egg associated microbes again klebsiella is figuring there and we did a detailed uh, analysis now we are focusing on uh, how exactly the territories are dictated by the microbes and another thing hpr or host plant induced resistance right you know chemical elicitors like salicylic acid and all are well exploited by pathologists actually not much by entomologists salicylic acid all these things so what we did salicylic acid just we sprayed salicylic acid and when we checked the fruit fly is not preferring the salicylic acid spread fruits you can see the oviposition punctures in the treatment and as well as even number of eggs laid also it is not preferring what exactly is happening then we went in detail the volatiles we took this is the salicylic acid untreated fruit this is treated fruit i said you in the first uh, slide right you just see the carine and osmin these two are very good attractants for mango fruit fly it identifies mango through these cues only carine osmin actually if you smell osmin you just uh, you feel like it is mango mango smell so once if you are uh, spraying the salicylic acid these two carine and osmin are switched off so mango disappeared for mango fruit fly it became mr india you know mr india our our generation knows mr india i don't know moment these cues are gone 
there is no fruit exist for fruit fly so you can see simple spray of salicylic acid and we also compared with cis jasmine here how much percentage of fruit fly infestation you can bring down simple not even 1 rupee per liter it costs and it is not any pesticide residue associated issues also there and usually the fruit flies occurs towards end of the harvest you can happily go still you can reduce just 50% of the fruit fly damage with such treatments and why i am telling there are several chemical elicitors which are not exploited particularly for insects pathology they are well established already so again another thing natural enemies we never explored particularly you know wherever red ant moves mango fruit fly never lays eggs if red ant movement is there mango fruit fly avoids such areas taking this cue we we took the body volatiles of red ants and we gave you see we know already gamma actolactone is attractant right ovi positional stimulant so this is gamma actolactone as a positive control this is gamma actolactone with uh, red ant body volatiles ecophila body volatiles and when we gave you see number of eggs laid came down drastically so it is sensing the red ant uh, body volatiles and it is avoiding it so then we went ahead and we identified all these uh, chemical cues like andecan dodecan tridecan so once we made blend and we sprayed the banana you can see here the um, this is the natural uh, red ant uh, sample applied fruits synthetic blend that is controlled the number of fruits and very eco friendly sprays very eco friendly sprays so such natural enemy pest interactions need to be explored this is again very simple study carried out by landres he says in cotton if you are giving some uh, small uh, slight pruning it attracts the natural enemies as well as it deters the moths we we never explored all this horticultural or any natural practices effect on pest populations did we we never we never bothered we will say shoot clipping that this and what is exactly that tra being translated onto the insect or how insects are being behaved this is very simple technique if you ask a farmer you just slight pruning you do this is the benefit associated it, we can convince him very easily right and particularly horticultural crops where pruning they are very amenable for pruning again this is the already now the trend abroad in abroad hipv is formulations what is hipv is so they are crop specific right and also pest specific so they already have formulations hipv formulations and they identify identify these and also the associated crop which once natural enemy enter your crop need to stay there right you need to have some uh, attract reward strategy for that you need to identify the crop combinations also see how much work we can do for our crops for our insects that is the voluminous uh, data can be generated in this area this is again simple push and pull strategy which i was mentioning uh, conceptualized by rotan strad research and uh, experimented in uh, african countries particularly by jayur khan actually even this technique was being proposed for the food price and uh, as an uh, given as a nomination not yet considered but what i mean i mean to say they have major problem of stem borers and another striga so what is striga yeah so these things they want to handle how they handled they identified particular crop combinations like uh, trap crop using the napier grass around the maize and also desmodium in between to repel the moths and to attract uh, natural enemies that worked very nicely actually push pull that's all this is our age old intercropping or whatever it is but we need to identify the crop combinations how many successful crop combinations we have anybody heard about uh, growing marigold in tomato right why how many such crops we know for all our crop combinations one or two right one or two 
so we need to strengthen our studies in these areas chemical ecology comes later once you identify some successful combinations you can work out on the what is exactly happening from chemical ecology point of view so this is the cost benefit ratio where they practiced uh, push and pull strategies with minimal inputs yeah this is virus vector relationship and again and one of our phd student actually he is not entomology student his horticulture you know iri students are coming to ihr till now only horticulture students used to come this year onwards madam we were being given for uh, other subjects also so now till now we were pure researchers now we are going to show uh, now we know what is the how handling the students we were uh, till now we were with only our research now onwards students will come from iri we need to focus so this is one horticulture student i am just member uh, committee but since he was roaming freely his guide called me jayant is just plan some work for him he is not at all coming to lab then that is enough for entomologist right because i was not bothered his horticulture student let him enjoy so then i said since he was working on chili screening for virus and all i asked him just to collect chili virus infected plant volatiles and healthy plant volatiles you do one bioassay i asked him he did one simple bioassay he collected virus infected chili volatiles and also healthy leaf volatiles and after one week he came to me and gave the data there is a distinct behavioral response whenever and he did white flies two groups of white flies one virulent the other one is a virulent in his bioassays it is very clear uh, white flies are going for healthy plants and a, a virulent are going for virus infected plants i thought maybe some mistake you repeat the bioassays i said again he repeated same thing is happening what exactly virus is manipulating the vector and also the plant to produce specific set of volatiles so only infected um, uh, vectors are going to healthy plants and uh, healthy vectors are going to infected virus plants very beautiful uh, observations and detailed chemical ecology studies went to int after that observation that's what i said behavioral observations and data is very important once we saw that is consistently happening we went into detailed uh, by chemical ecology and even um, all obps and all expression we looked and we formulated how the chili virus is spreading in the field we came out and another uh, major problem in banana you know what is this we have an dbt project i don't know major problem for farmers major problem and uh, once this uh, in we will infest the, the plant is gone and farmer usually comes in the later stages only we found there are several uh, uh, different age uh, we will start roaming in the field and we could trap them using the stem uh, cut stem traps also but uh, not big numbers not in big numbers and we could identify all these volatiles and uh, why we are not able to attract the big numbers we found uh, you know this uh, r strategist and k strategist what is it hmm? yeah so i can say this uh, banana weevil is k strategist it it is only predictable environment it uh, lives and only with limited uh, progeny and it is very tough to attract coleopteran insects you check coleopteran insects it is very tough so we are still uh, taking this challenge to work out on this <coughs> another thing where we are working you know we came we came to know about quarantine when <laughs> right before covid also insects know how, how to quarantine actually if any in infected insect is there they avoid it they avoid particularly it is already reported in ants same thing we worked out in uh, banana weevils when we infested banana we banana weevil with metarhizium and that such insects when but these are foolishly going and uh, trying to mingle with the healthy group though the healthy weevils are running away they were running away avoiding this infested uh, i mean uh, infected uh, insect so we are working on this uh, 
microbe interactions also we are identifying the cues and this is the latest one say hipv you said right particularly in banana banana is like a very densely sorry very de densely planted crop when its temporary infestation is there we can't uh, new it actually so what we are working with the support of iit darwad we are working on developing sensors using hipvs we don't know how far we will be successful just this year it this project started this is again fruit sucking moth i don't know how many of you know fruit sucking moth major problem in pomegranate not only pomegranate and several crops dollar crop right so major problem and uh, it uh, it visits your crop only midnight during midnight and attacks your crop and goes off so we did uh, always all uh, attractive bait fruits we used and we could understand like uh, ripe over ripe banana and goa are attracting the moths so we we thought of proposing this as a technology to farmers farmer also very much uh, excited when he saw the moths are coming to these banana and goa over egg, pomegranate crop but the thing is these farmers are over excited they started telling me madam can we inject these um, fruits with insecticide because they are coming feeding and going they couldn't see that we will inject these fruits with insecticide they will die it's very risky right and you are ha hanging the bananas goas in pomegranate field and they are injecting with in any boys small kids or farm animals they may feed and it i thought uh, better not to propose this technology so we stopped there and then we we uh, we checked the infested fruits are attracting a multiple uh, moths to the see different age uh, feeding holes are there and another thing is multiple species exist in the fruit sucking moths if you use one sex pheromone it won't be sufficient you have to you go for stacked multi stacked pheromones we took uh, field uh, observations how moths are arriving you can see here the very old on each fruit all these types of holes are existing so the fermented fruits are attracting the moths into the orchard that's what we found and we could identify the chemical cues also from this and we kept to the smileys you can see the actually my research associate when he kept this uh, tube with the uh, infected pomegranate fruit odor and when we was going to the poly house the poly house was very big actually maybe from this uh, three four times of this room and hundreds of moths were released and moths started and uh, sitting on his pocket only so that much odor response we could notice and with this great uh, satisfaction we went to field and uh, we told to that farmer uh, tata tomorrow so many moths will be trapped uh, even i said i will pay you per moth this much but next day when we checked uh, not even single moth but in the lab in the poly house we could uh, attract what was the re reason we were going around doing post mortem the all damaged fruits the farmer dumped into the next to the orchard in a old well okay there tons of water is there i am sitting here with 1 ppm why moths will come so field challenges are huge and immense so then again we started using our in silco docking now we are focusing on more potent cues and also dose standardizations we are trying to do to attract so the major problems with uh, semiochemicals they are everywhere they are everywhere that's why if you are going with 1 ppm of your odor they are already there particularly chiromons unlike pheromones chiromons uh, using of chiromons in the field very tough uh, challenge and but provided if you can standardize the dose they can serve as very beautiful ipm tool section and for this you need to have a good understanding with the biochemist marriage between entomology and biochemistry is must is must and without good biochemist support we can't do anything here and um, yeah I, i added to this climate change is happening whether you accept or not also yes it is there and this climate change is resetting the insect plant interactions again we did one uh, study under abiotic stress like drought the 
insect response is totally different for a highly stressed out plants low low, uh, low stressed plants it is totally different so this is again another dimension where you you can carry out your research so what i will say insect plant response or uh, semiochemical response is not linear it is always uh, non linear so we need to study this is all what i am telling you for all your insects for all your is no information existing so we need to generate information in first place don't think of gcad gcms they are will come later stage and for uh, sophisticated data to publish in high end journals but before that you need to have information in your hand what exactly is happening then only you can uh, do some thing yeah i uh, started this work quite long time back almost and still we are going ahead and i have some team the work which i presented was carried out by several of these people thank you any questions i think tnau is gold mine for uh, entomology students at least i tell you very strong the subject is very strong in tnau even during my days my days when i am i was writing rs i was looking how many are from tnau when i am going for interview we were cross checking how many from iri how many from tnau because these are very strong people which who can give you competition so very you are in best place to learn entomology and i encourage you to take uh, nice research works where information never ex didn't exist earlier so whatever you generate will become information mainly particularly in uh, as in student phase we look for similar studies right my results are on par with and get i just get bored by reading that why can't you only do it first take several insect uh, plant interactions or whatever it is i only focused on that area but several areas exist where new information need to be generated so leave all seasonal incidences all those things venture into i i am really envied by your uh, generation because this is technology name the technology you have how many of you know about uh, literature collection you know maybe my generation uh, who they know right first my faculty used to give us literature like cards and used to sit in uh, library right 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 but how many of you know and how much technology we didn't even isolate dna when we were students okay but how many omics are there proteomics uh, metabolomics uh, transcriptomics name the technology it is available only thing you need to identify one uh, hypothesis which you can reason out and you can generate that uh, reason using all sophisticated technologies and uh, always look for uh, inter uh, disciplinary research always uh, make it a point you will uh, all when i was a student i tell you uh, in uh, bscag i was biochemistry was a dreadful subject for me okay Wow, my god when second year biochemistry over thank god i'm done with it i am not looking at biochemistry again i thought okay and again okay i chose entomology came to entomology did phd in phd again for filling our credit hours i need to choose some core courses non core courses so one advanced ecology was there my god who will do advanced ecology all mathematical modeling and all those things i i looked for alternate course it was a rodentology i chose can anybody swap advanced ecology to rodentology i did it and today i ended in chemical ecology so karma follows sir <laughs> okay it won't leave you but that's what i'm telling you have the best uh, you are at the best time particularly to carry out research whatever facilities you want you are there and many labs are open for collaborations also not only me any lab you approach they will be open for collaborations so look for uh, doing some exciting new work okay uh, ma'am recently i got my topic i will be working for uh, trapping the female fruit flies in mango 
Uh, I have already carried out some preliminary uh, experiments, ma'am. Similar to your pomegranate experiment, I had a very uh, disappointing experiment yeah. recently. Um, uh, there were incidences, but for some reason, I could not uh, trap female fruit flies. But later, when we inquired with the farmer, and we realized they sprayed chemicals very recently. just before me carrying out the experiment and ma'am they were already uh, methyl eugenol traps already installed ma'am could these two be the reasons that i could not get uh, my result instead of methyl eugenol maybe the pesticides would have definitely yes ma'am interfered but i don't know methyl eugenol whether methyl eugenol traps uh, had some insects yes ma'am those had the male insects but uh, we could not get uh, much activity for the Because females very powerful attractant actually it can even drag the fly from 1 km distance so whatever you would have used i don't know maybe any caramons or protein bites whatever you used there must be some short range right and already pesticides were applied must be they would have played points thank, yeah. thank you ma'am oh, we could identify some bunch of fruity esters actually they are hiding uh, attracting both the species both the species some fruity esters they are good at attracting both the ones but uh, still uh, laboratory experiments only not ventured into print good afternoon ma'am i am dinesh kumar first phd student i did my msc thesis work in um, nano ferrofermon formulation for extend the shelf life in field for controlling mango fruit fly ma'am in methyl eugenol uh, you told that uh, gamma actolactan will uh, attract the gravid females at lab level will it works under uh, the field field level ma'am it works in the field provided the formulation matters okay. actually if you like methyl eugenol if you dip, dip the wooden block in yes, gamma actolactan and because okay. it is a ovipositional cue right it is yes, not uh, see methyl eugenol is feeding cue feeding it, uh, males will come to feed on methyl eugenol because they feel literature says it enhances the mating competitiveness of the males that's why it is feeding stimulant but gamma actolactan is an oviposition stimulant so what we observed we did first so many trials we did the females will arrive the moment if there is no oviposition substrate they leave it so first of all, to establish females are arriving we used sticky traps so just the female comes and bumps and it is trapped there so it it attracts but over a period of time again uh, i have my own doubts because i showed you host shift theory even seasonal variation is there in uh, response of insects to gamma actolactone <laughs> during mango season the how the insect response is different from goa season i mean is, is there any possible we can blend uh, blend those to chemicals methyl eugenol and uh, gamma actolactone or any other uh, uh, oviposition cue no no it is possible actually we came out with the one blend uh, dorsal ure we call for dorsal one company is also uh, they took it uh, licensed but uh, i have still uh, inhibition about it uh, like um, mango fruit fly is highly polyphagous it can adjust to any host range not even mango goa even your uh, avenue trees any wild fruits are there also it will survive okay uh, i can come across reading the literature ma'am i uh, gone through on paper and they told that uh, male fruit flies um, feed the methyl eugenol and it convert into e coniflor alcohol in the rectal gland it will attract the female the mating ma'am we can use this technology to attract the May, female fruit fly before it um, mating it is actually that's what i said whatever male produces it is short range short range attractant okay okay so to uh, bring the fly first to your trap you need some long range, long range. then once it arrives you can have some short range cues so combination of both long both. and short range cues are must uh, it means both uh, combination of oi patient lure and uh, the yeah male like, like how methyl eugenol attracts male yes ma'am long range uh, cue like that you need to have one for female thank you ma'am in support of his data ma'am uh, he did that. the one interesting observation we got is uh, um we developed a nano formulation with uh, nano carriers and almost four and a half month it's coming and the number of catches is concerned almost three fold higher than uh, 
control control is around 900 something over the period but in uh, treated the best treatment shown uh, 4900 something it shows that uh, it catches very well but some of our scientists suggested uh, you know trapping male alone will not helpful so you work for female i asked him to search literature and that's why he is saying that is there any chance for blending and other thing no what i say still you are whatever the nano formulation you developed if it is attracting almost four times yeah to the control yes that is first one uh, positive point yes the second thing is you said how for how many days it is uh, viable almost four and a half month madam that is uh, big big price right uh, actually we stopped the observation go for patenting it and yeah. touching it actually we stopped the observation we See, thought the splat technology you know yes madam yes splat split It's now uh, yeah. atgc yeah. purchased the technology and they are coming out with the pink ball bomb yes madam yes they are already evaluated for fruit flies also okay. i evaluated their uh, formulation it looks like a gel formulation like our colgate toothpaste no like tubes only they will use uh, almost it comes around 4 uh, to 5 months that is their uh, patented technology but uh, they are telling around 40 days something but if you were the uh, formulation is effective yeah. up to 4 months also yes. it is indian patent i will uh, support and uh, you should go for filing patent is there any chance you can also ready to what is flat technique i am talking yes. about yeah. it is us us technique california davis i think yeah. california davis yeah if you have some such a wonderful uh, technology yes ma'am go ahead for patenting don't look for only males the shelf life for, uh, of the technology is important regular uh, methyl eugenol hardly lasts for 20 25 days right okay you are getting four months uh, huge margin we have the flies also for sake of justification we kept all the flies we tried and kept all the observations also yeah patenting any any chances are there in the future also you can uh, collaborate with us for yeah, both the things definitely that's what i'm telling my lab is open why i, <laughs> I expressed my uh, what i should say it is not my i'm not uh, really happy because several students started coming and uh, i felt it is not being translated if you know once i attended one chemical ecology symposium in australia there the society of chemical ecology was conducting the conference it was happening like any of our conferences only and the journal of chemical ecology uh, was conducting general body meeting okay during the general body meeting actually all uh, me- only members were present and they were uh, the editor was presenting chemical ecology papers received from this country this 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 and he highlighted from india one paper that is my paper which i did in uk so some embarrassingly he was talking i don't know something then during the discussion i discussed with him sir why you showed one paper from india actually that is not from india it is from uk you need not uh, highlight that one paper and go on commenting uh, india doesn't have chemical ecology papers something like that then he said no 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 we consider only main author main author country only we will consider then i felt what is stopping guns because they don't have insects to work they have only hardly couple of insects to work any western country they have implementation so really i struggled to establish that it almost it uh, touched me in 2014-15 one crore but uh, students are coming very casually they are using and they are going back submitting pieces they are forgetting to publish that only irritated me so i start then i started uh, thinking you know that uh, gcad facility it is not that easy to maintain it is like white elephant you i need to procure every two months i need to procure hydrogen i need to procure uh, helium and uh, zero air all these gas cylinders you know how tough it is to get uh, one cooking gas cylinder right at home so all these gas cylinders in our setup and uh, expenditure payment and uh, when i am su- supporting students if they are not coming out with papers it it doesn't reflect that's why i need the lab need to be projected because international community should know the chemical ecology is happening in india and we have we are blessed with insects i tell you 
name the insect chemical ecology information is not available you can choose any insect not that's what i said my mentor asked me to work on drosophila because they don't have insects how many insects we have thank you madam for your good words